Long before the first empires, long before the pyramids, long before even the first spark of fire in human hands, there was a world so different from our own that we might not recognize it. It was a world dominated by titans. Titans of wood. Primeval trees, so colossal, so vast, so impossibly grand, that even mountains would bow before them. Imagine a forest where each tree stretched so high into the heavens that the eye could not see its crown. Where roots coiled deep into the earth's molten heart, drinking in fire and energy, while their branches pierced the very clouds and brushed the stars. These were not mere plants. They were living pillars, binding together the sky, the earth, and everything in between. The atmosphere itself was thicker, richer, alive with oxygen and energy radiating from these giants. Life thrived like never before. Insects grew as large as birds. Reptiles walked as giants. Beasts far greater than any elephant roamed the land, feeding under the endless canopy. And above, in the crowns of the titans, creatures of myth soared freely. Dragons with wingspans larger than cities, serpents of light, guardians of a world brimming with life. This was the Earth at its peak. The golden age of the planet. A paradise. But paradise always attracts envy. And paradise never lasts forever. One day, the sky burned. They came, whether gods, invaders, or forces beyond our understanding, we cannot say. Some describe them as beings of light, others as destroyers from the stars. Whatever they were, they feared the connection these trees maintained between earth and the heavens. And so they sought to sever it. With weapons of unimaginable power, they attacked. Some say the weapons were not made of metal, but of sound and vibration, tools that could shatter matter itself. Others describe axes made of fire and light, cutting where no blade of iron could. And the first titan fell. When a tree the size of a mountain crashes, the earth itself trembles. Imagine the ground splitting open, oceans roaring into tsunamis that swallowed entire continents. Winds screamed with the force of hurricanes as branches the size of valleys ripped through the sky. Each fall was not just the death of a tree, it was a catastrophe reshaping the face of the planet. One after another, the titans were cut down. Their bodies collapsed into oceans, into plains, into deserts. Their crowns ignited the sky in firestorms, their roots tore up mountains. And when it was over, the earth was unrecognizable. What once had been a forest of living pillars became a graveyard. But perhaps the scars are still here, hiding in plain sight. Look at the great mesas of Arizona, their flat tops rising from the desert like the stumps of something once alive. Look at Uluru in Australia, its smooth surface rising impossibly from the ground. Look at the basalt columns of Iceland, their geometric perfection resembling the inner fibers of a tree cut clean. Could these be the remains of trunks, petrified and frozen in time? If you walk across the Grand Canyon, you might be standing in what was once the hollowed core of a fallen giant. If you stand at the edge of Devil's Tower, with its perfectly vertical striations, it does not resemble a mountain, it resembles the fossilized stump of a colossal tree. Could it be that our world is not just a land of mountains and rocks, but the remains of an ancient forest cut down long before human memory? And yet, we have remembered. Though our history books are silent, our myths are not. Nearly every ancient culture tells the same story. The Norse spoke of Yggdrasil, the world tree, connecting all realms of existence. The Mayans honored the Seba, whose roots reached into the underworld and whose branches touched the heavens. In Mesopotamia, the tree of immortality grew in the garden of the gods. In the Bible, the tree of life stood at the center of Eden. In Hindu tradition, the Ashvatha tree grew upside down, with its roots in the heavens and its branches reaching down into the earth. Why does this symbol repeat across continents, across languages, across thousands of years? Could it be that these were not metaphors, 
but memories. Even our architecture whispers hints of the past. The pyramids, the megaliths, the stone circles, were they attempts to honor the memory of the lost titans? Or were they built with the help of energies once channeled through those colossal roots? Humanity, standing small and powerless, may have built shrines to what they saw as gods. But those gods may simply have been trees. And perhaps, they are not gone. Some traditions say the Titans never truly died. That what we see today as mountains and plateaus are not corpses, but sleeping giants. That deep within the earth, the roots still pulse faintly with life, waiting for the right time to awaken. Prophecies across cultures speak of a rebirth, of the stumps sprouting again, of trunks rising skyward, of a day when earth reconnects with the stars. Picture it. Valleys trembling as roots split the ground open once more. Oceans reflecting canopies that stretch across the sky. Mountains cracking apart as living wood rises higher than the clouds. A world reborn, alive with cosmic energy once again. Maybe our myths are not just stories. Maybe our mountains are not just stone. Maybe our planet remembers more than we realize. And if that's true, then one day, the giants will rise again.